So welcome again. Um, my name is Donna Brighton. I'll introduce myself again in just a minute. And uh, let's see. I wanted to share with you this morning. So this is the view that I'm looking out to. On the left, you'll see um, the fog as it was rolling in off of Lake Michigan. That was earlier this morning around 921. And then later this morning, about 1034, I took another picture and Navy Pier had completely disappeared. I thought this was a really fantastic way to start our conversation today as we're talking about thriving through change. And the reason for that is that at times, I don't know if you feel this way, but I certainly feel kind of that fog of overwhelm from the change that we're going through. And sometimes things are sort of clear and you can sort of figure it out. And other times everything's completely buried in fog. So with that as a starter to talking about our subject today, Day. Um, my goal, and this quite honestly was one of the most fun webinars to prepare for, I'm really excited about the topic, and my goal is kind of breaking through that fog. How do we not just survive this change, but how do we actually thrive as we work our way through this change? So uh, I mentioned I'm Donna Brighton. I know many of you. I'm thrilled that you're here. Very excited. And um, the reason I'm passionate about this topic is I love the subject of change, have been doing it professionally for many years, and I'm really passionate about neuroscience, which I'll share with you in just a minute. Um, but the, the greatest reason why this topic matters to me is because I want to see each and every one of you come out the other side of whatever this madness is better than when you went in. And you can do that if you make some um, thoughtful changes and are paying attention to the um, items that I'm going to share with you in today's webinar. So I'm asking for web uh, participation from all of you. If you are so willing, you know, type in questions, um, give your thoughts and suggestions as I'm sharing um, kind of from my perspective, all of you have brilliance and wisdom and I'd love to hear from you. But today's webinar is just 30 minutes. So that means in the next 27 minutes, I'm gonna download a whole bunch of information to you. And at the end of that 30 minutes, each of you will have the opportunity to transition from this presentation of content into 30 minutes of conversation. So Miriam's going to put the link into the chat box. So you'll all be able to pull, if you want to join us, pull that link up and um, join us for a conversation after this webinar. All right. Whoa. Hello. That was fun. All right, so our focus today, um, in this very brief time, I mentioned 30 minutes of content, 30 minutes of connection, three topics. We're gonna talk about the brain and change. We're gonna talk about channeling change energy, and then three recommendations as you um, thrive during this change. So, just want to um, give you a disclaimer as we uh, jump into this. I am not a neuroscientist. I don't play one on television. I don't have fancy degrees or titles, but what I do have is a passion and a fascination with the subject of neuroscience. I've read hundreds of books, studied the topics I'm gonna to share with you extensively. I'm also part of the Flow Research community, learning from Stephen Kotler and his team of neuroscientists. And I've also learned quite a lot from the Neuroleadership Institute team and have had the honor of speaking twice at their annual summit. I've received my certification in conversational intelligence, which is the neuroscience-based understanding of communication fundamentals. So my thinking and what I'll be sharing with you today is an integration of my ex expertise in change and the learning I've done over the last decade intentionally staying current with the latest research and developments to help my coaching and consulting clients from what's emerged as more and more research comes out. And today I'm going to share some of those highlights with you. So um, jumping into our very first topic on change in the brain. So these are the two things I want to talk about here. First of all, the change curve. And for all of you brilliant change practitioners that are on the line with me, you're very familiar with this, but it's interesting in these days and times to actually apply the change curve to ourselves and say, where are we at? Where in this process do you find yourself? 
And the thing that's really especially interesting to me as I think about the change curve is there's actually multiple changes happening. So for some of us, it's changing from working mostly in an office to working at home more or all the time. Um, for others, they're dealing with children constantly and managing children's education and entertainment. Um, so there's a lot of different changes that people are being impacted by. And the question as you consider this is, what are all the changes you've experienced and where are you at? So are you still in denial about what's going on? Like surely this is going to end next week. Um, are you in a place of frustration? So what's going on in your world and how are you feeling um, as you're processing through this change? And I want to differentiate between change and transition. Again, for those of you who are change experts, very familiar, but it's helpful to remind yourself the change is the external. COVID-19 is happening to us. It's a change that is being imposed upon us. What we have the ability to control or manage within ourselves is the transition. It's the process that we're each going through as we figure out wow, what's going on and how am I going to manage myself through this? And the transition piece is what we're going to address today. How are we each going to transition through the change that's being imposed upon us? So I mentioned that change is in fact a process. And um, the ending here is the, the life that we knew and hopefully loved, right, where we were engaging with friends and doing a lot of interesting things in our lives, traveling. Um, that's come to an end for all of us collectively. And right now, I'm guessing um, we're st some people are still dealing with that ending and moving into transition. Other people are fully into that exploration or transition phase. I know Brene Brown calls it the messy middle. So wherever you are, um, just recognize a couple things that we're all dealing with multiple changes, right? Changes in how we work, changes in um, our, work, our um, work life, right? We can't, I have friends that um, also live in, in the city but are out in the suburbs right now and she was saying, I'm used to that city mindset where you just go to the grocery store every couple of days and get what you need because everything's so convenient and we can't do that anymore. So those are all the changes that are happening and we're dealing with multiples. Everyone's going through the process and we're all doing it differently. So every person is at a different place in their change process. Couple other things about change. Saturation is real. And I know as I've talked to different organizations over the years, that saturation is probably the topic that sticks, <laughs> even though it's a sponge. Um, and that's because a lot of people can uh, relate to this. Meaning, and this comes, um, this explanation comes um, from my mentor and friend, Daryl Connor, where he talked about change saturation as a sponge. And inside each of us, we have a sponge that can absorb a certain amount of change. Now, we have personal change, professional change, you know, at work, there might be new systems and so on. And all of that change takes up the capacity of our sponge. And then we reach a point, which many people have today, where that sponge is absolutely overloaded. It can't take another drop of change. <laughs> And quite frankly, you've probably seen this in your own household or maybe among your friends as you've interacted over Zoom calls in the evenings. Um, some people have moved into dysfunction, like enough already. So that is a reality during times of change, especially right now where people are at their saturation or overflow um, place and they're like, enough, I'm done. Um, a couple of things I wanted to mention here is that in saturation, you have some options. So you can either accept it, I'm just overwhelmed and that's how it is. Um, you can squeeze out the sponge or you can grow the sponge. And squeezing out means um, in some ways, I think right now reframing because there's a lot of change that we're all dealing with that we have no choice. Um, however, the growing of your sponge so that you can absorb more change comes from resilience practices. 
and resilience practices Sean Aker wrote about uh, in his book, and we're happy to provide all these resources uh, post-webinar. But he talks about things like a gratitude practice, meditation, uh, journaling. These are all practices that can build resilience and grow your sponge. And the larger your sponge, the more change you can deal with. So quick review, change is happening and transition, that internal piece is up to each and every one of us. It's a process that we're going through, but that's what we have control over. Secondly, the change is impacting everyone. We all are going through transition, but how we're doing it is different. And the last point here is the FUD plus change for many of us is equaling overwhelm or saturation. And I like to refer to the FUD factor as the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that is all around us today. And it's very contagious if you're not careful. So the second thing I wanted to share was, um, we talked about change, then we're gonna talk about the brain. And um, it's helpful. I found that many people benefited from being reminded of what's happening and how the change around us is impacting our brains and why for some of us it, it just, um, it's, it's feeling really uncomfortable. So first concept, that your brain is wired to keep you alive. This is just the basic facts. And so it is constantly scanning the environment, looking for potential threats. And today, we're experiencing a heck of a lot of threats. For those of you who have been consuming a lot of media, I don't think you can read an article and not feel a sense of threat from what's being shared. It's just statistic after statistic and story after story about these threats. And so all of that, the information we're receiving is putting our brains in a high state of threat alert. And that information, believe it or not, is moving up something that Chris Argerus talked about as the ladder of inference. And uh, Judith Glazer talks about this um, as well in the ladder of conclusions. So they both are um, similar in that we take multiple steps up this ladder and we reach a point of concluding and taking action. But if we can dial back down and climb back down the ladder, we can start examining what's really happening. So I mentioned that the brain is probably very activated into a threat state because of all that's going on right now. That creates within us some chemical reactions that we're responding to because they create feelings which transition into thoughts and we're meaning makers. So we're taking the meaning of those feelings and translating that into something we believe about what's going on and then reach a conclusion. So the, there are facts, the facts are the facts, but we get to choose our response in how we process and deal with them. And I found this model to be really helpful for me as I'm climbing up my ladder of conclusions or that ladder of inference and getting to a place of, oh my gosh, you know, and whatever conclusions I like personally, I like to have a lot of fun with conspiracy theories. Um, but reality is that we're all kind of processing this change. And as we go through it and take in more information, we are moving through this ladder and, um, having certain beliefs about it. And instead of holding on to those beliefs as if those beliefs are fact, the opportunity what I'm inviting all of you to do is climb back down the ladder and examine what's going on at the very basic level. So what is it that you're feeling or observing or experiencing? And if you take the time to do that, you can choose a different reality, a different way to look at things, and that will actually shift the way that your brain perceives or experiences the circumstance. The reason I mention that is that when you are in a heightened state of alert, you're experiencing constant danger signs, right? Oh my gosh, watch out, the world's coming to an end, or we're all going to die, or whatever story is coming up for you. When that happens, your brain moves from being open, connecting, able to be creative and thoughtful, into a place of um, 
retraction. And this is where cortisol is the hormone that's primarily released. And you can see in this illustration, as all the brains are impacted by this cortisol, which is a stress hormone, it moves us from, again, being open, appreciative, and creative problem solving, which is what we need right now in order to look at the new reality and find new possibilities. So when that happens, it flips us back into this place where we are feeling threatened and we engage in behaviors that are not useful, whether that's becoming critical, defensive, um, dictating, we have to do this, um, limiting, meaning we're, we're limiting our connection, withholding information, all behaviors that are not helpful, but they are dictated by the brain as we allow that negativity to translate into the hormones that shut down our prefrontal cortex, which is where all of the positive um, reasoning functions can occur. So this is why it's so essential as we consider what's happening right now that we're paying attention to the way that we're processing things and we're even paying attention to the information and the stimulus that we take in because once you recognize this, you will see that your brain chemistry is being impacted by the choices you make and the information that you're bringing into your brain. So I love this quote from uh, Frederick Nietzsche when he says, he who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. And uh, I share that with you because I heard a really interesting presentation the other day where they said, if you lose your why, you lose your way. And so I'm going to make a case for the importance of staying centered and focused on purpose, a bigger why than just getting caught in the fear and concern, that FUD factor, fear, uncertainty, and doubt that's happening right now. So during times of change, and I'm not speaking just of our current situation of, of COVID-19, but it, during any change, whether this is an organizational restructuring or a brand new system that's being implemented in, or in an organization, all change creates disruption. And from that disruption, energy is released. And we have an opportunity when that energy is released in terms of what we do with it. And so I'm going to call that how you channel change energy. So here's a really interesting point of awareness. That emotion, which is often, remember I talked about your body's receiving stimulus, lots of information that you're taking in, negativity in the news. That stimulus then is transitioned from that chemical reaction in your body into a feeling, right? And often we interpret those feelings and they become emotions. And I heard a doctor explain, uh, she was saying that emotion is E, energy in motion. So change, disruptive change releases that energy, and that energy in motion needs to go somewhere. So the old way of dealing with a lot of the emotions that come up as a result of the change that's occurring is to stuff it, pretend it doesn't really exist, or potentially deny it, right? Like, that's not really going on. I'm just going to be an ostrich and put my head in the sand. The new way, the new approach to handling and addressing the emotions, that energy and motion that's occurring in each of us is actually to accept it and release it. And there's a variety of ways that you can do that. Um, we don't have enough time to get into all of that right now. But this is what uh, breathing techniques do, even pausing and taking a deep breath in and out. That is a way of releasing emotion. Um, exercise is another really important thing, which is why that's so essential, even though we're all stuck inside. How can we keep moving so that we can keep releasing that energy from the change? So you have a choice as you're faced with the energy that's being released from this disruptive change. How are you going to handle it? Are you going to process it the old way, you know, just kind of like ignore it, stuff it, deny it, or actually accept that it's occurring, acknowledge it's there, and then release it and let it go? 
so my third section, we talked about change in the brain. Then we talked about the reality of um, dealing with change energy. And now I'd like to talk about thriving, which is really the focus of our time today. How do we thrive through change? So the first concept I wanna share with you in thriving is that our ability to transform anything, any circumstance, any situation, that our transforming power lies in our ability to reframe what's going on. So we all have a track that's going on inside of our head, you know, the, the worry track <laughs> or the self-talk track, however you think of it. And that track inside of your head, um, many of us are familiar with it. And we recognize, you know, we have to be careful not to have too much negative self-talk. That's a, that's a really um, bad indicator um, for, for future health. Um, it has a it's a tremendous impact on our ability to be successful and to um, move through challenging times like this. So I want to raise your awareness that you need to pay attention to that self-talk track that's occurring in your head. But here's something you might not have considered. What are the questions that you're asking yourself? So I heard a neuroscientist, um, I think it was the week before last, was talking about this. There's many different questions that you can be asking, and your brain is incapable of holding a question without answering it. So this is why it's essential for you to pay attention to the kinds of questions you're asking yourself. So for example, am I gonna be okay? Is like yes or no, right? And your brain's gonna probably move in a negative direction. Um, you know, what's going to happen to me? Um, all of these questions, which are legitimate questions. But my challenge to you is how can you reframe those? How can you take a different look at those questions that are coming up in your head? For example, hmm, what can I do to take advantage of the opportunity I'm being given right now? Might be another question. So uh, the opportunity, as I said, was reframing and asking yourself different questions. Um, another, another element, another thing you can consider as you're um, thriving through change is refocusing. I talked about the importance of the why and identifying clearly the bigger purpose, right? So whatever that means for you, actually pausing and thinking what do I want to do? What do I want to go through this or grow through this? And I love this question, will you be driven by purpose or circumstance? And the reason that this focus where you're choosing to put your attention matters is because there's a part of your brain called the RAS or the reticular activation system that's actually going to start paying attention to the things going on around you that correspond to where you're trying to pay attention, the questions you're asking yourself, the talk track in your head, and so on. So we talked about reframing, refocusing, and then I'd like to talk about refreshing. And, um, oh, that's right. I wanted to um, kind of share with you an example. This is a personal example for us on what we did in terms of refocusing on what really matters. So um, as you can imagine for many of you during this time, uh, all the work that we were doing um, on site, working um, with clients or doing some keynote speaking, all of that evaporated. So instead of getting frustrated, we transitioned our thinking and said, what can we provide? What can I contribute to the world? Kind of that reframing again. And so what we decided to do was we actually took all of our experience in change and culture and we said, yeah, there's a lot of people that are teaching everyone how to use Zoom better. And, you know, the five things you need to remember when you're meeting with your team. Excellent but they're missing some really important concepts around change in culture. And because we have experience in actually doing that work with organizations, we took all of that and we packaged it and we created toolkits to help organizations that maybe aren't as familiar with the, um, with the concept of working remotely or working virtually. So I want to invite all of you on the call today to um, help us out and give us some feedback. Um, if you go to virtualworksuccess.com and click on that button, 
again, that says reserve your toolkit. Um, we would love for you to be able to give us some feedback, give us your suggestions. This is our way of reframing and refocusing in our time today. So again, we took this opportunity and we said, hey, how can we do something different since we're not able to do what we've always done? So we talked about reframing, refocusing, and now refreshing. And the refreshing piece has to do with body, mind, heart, and spirit. So many of us are feeling out of balance, kind of like this illustration. And the question is, how do we get back into balance, whatever that looks like for you? And this comes from a program that both Scott and I attended at the Human Performance Institute, where they talk about all of these elements, the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual, and this capacity is essential for us to achieve our mission. So during this time of um, change and the transition that you're making, how can you refresh in these areas to get back in balance and use this as an opportunity to emerge stronger and better than before? So a quick recap. Again, our focus was on change and the brain. And I just say, please be kind to yourself. We talked about channeling the change energy that gets released during disruptive change. And remember, emotion is energy in motion. So either release it or it'll get stuck. And finally, how do you thrive during times of change? Through refocus, reframing, and refreshing. So in our last couple of minutes, I wanted to share with you that next Wednesday, we're gonna be doing another webinar. And this, we're gonna have a special guest, Christy Royce. She's gonna be answering some really important questions like why do virtual presentations fail? How do you connect with a remote audience and keep them engaged? So Christy's going to join us next week. We're going to give you a link. Miriam's put that in the chat there if you're interested in signing up. And we'll also provide it to all of you in a follow-up message. And the first 15 people that register for the webinar will get 30 minutes of complimentary coaching with Christy. And that will help you improve your virtual presentations. So we'll be providing that to you. Look for the email from us where we're going to give you the replay and you can reflect on the things I shared with you today. And then I would ask each of you to go to Virtual Work Success, sign up there um, for the manager toolkit because we value your input and would love you uh, to give us some feedback and help us understand how we can make the value that we're contributing to the world even better. So with that, um, again, I want to give you the connection link. So that's in your um, Zoom chat. If you go there and just copy that link, we're going to switch over in just a moment for all of you who want to join us to have some conversation, to catch up, or to talk about any of the things that we discussed today, whether that was change in the brain or your own fantastic neuroscience insights, whether it was how you're processing the energy that's being released, that emotion that's occurring, techniques and tools and tips you have there, or potentially how you're dealing, thriving through change by reframing, refocusing, and refreshing. So with that, um, if there's no questions, uh, Miriam, we can go ahead and say thank you to everyone. We so appreciate your participation today, and we hope we get to see some of you on the other side for a time of connection and catching up. So again, before we go, just make sure you copy that link out of the chat box, and we'll be over in Zoom meetings to connect with anybody who's interested in joining us. Thanks everyone and have a wonderful Wednesday. We'll see you next week with our guest, uh, Christy Royce. Bye-bye.